Like any avionics system, the eGPWS can encounter faults. They can be caused by hardware failures, incompatible databases, or failures of systems external to the eGPWS. So to help you troubleshoot problems, the eGPWC has diagnostic LEDs and a comprehensive suite of self-tests. The self-tests are in the handy eGPWS troubleshooting guide. Just log on to myaerospace.com, go to Technical Publications, and search for eGPWS Troubleshooting Guide. Troubleshooting begins with the three LED status indicators on the front panel of the Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning computer. The green Computer OK LED indicates that the eGPWC is operating correctly. The yellow External Fault LED indicates a problem with something outside the eGPWC, such as an external sensor, a system, or wiring. The red computer fail LED indicates a problem inside the eGPWC. More often than not, it's hardware. But it could be an incompatible database, or an invalid software version, or strapping. But in any case, if you get either a yellow external fault LED or a red computer fail LED, run the self-test to determine the cause of the fault before you remove or replace the LRU. The eGPWS has six levels of self-test. Level 1, go, no-go status. Level 2, current faults. Level 3, system configuration. Level 4, in-flight fault history. Level 5, in-flight warning history. And level 6, discrete input test. The self-tests enunciate the eGPWS status and activate lights and displays for visual verification. They include detailed configuration and status information for the eGPWC and aircraft installation, maintenance information detailing the cause of detected faults, and historical information about faults and alerts. Self-test enunciations are heard over the cockpit speaker system or the cockpit interphone system. Glide slope. In up. Mark 5 and Mark 7 systems also have a headphone jack on the front panel of the eGPWC. The Level 1 self test checks for configuration errors and gives you an overview of the current operational capability of the eGPWS. The pilot usually runs this test before flight. During the Level 1 self test, Cockpit enunciations are activated to verify wiring and lamps. A terrain display self-test pattern may appear. There are actually two versions of the Level 1 self-test. If you do a short push on the test button, less than two seconds, you'll get the go-no-go no go status. It indicates which modes of the eGPWC are currently unavailable and test systems outputs. But if instead you start with a long push, more than two seconds, you'll get the long level one self-test. It gives you everything from the short test plus all the configured voices, including warning voices, caution voices, and the altitude call-out voices. The level two self-test identifies all internal and external faults. Internal faults usually indicate a problem with the eGPWS. However, experience has shown that most internal faults at initial installation are due to aircraft wiring errors. Internal faults on in-service installations are more often attributed to the eGPWS. External faults indicate a problem with a system providing input to the eGPWS. This could be an Airing 429 bus, a signal fault, an analog signal fault, or a discrete input fault. It could even be a problem with the program pinning or the configuration module. Refer to the line maintenance manual of the troubleshooting card for a list of all possible faults and the required corrective action. A level three self-test gives you the eGPWC configuration information. This includes the part number, mod status, serial number, as well as the versions of the application software the configuration software, and the databases and other identifying information. 
The Level 3 self-test also enunciates all of the features that are enabled or disabled. The Level 4 self-test identifies any faults recorded over the last 10 flight legs. This information is helpful to resolve the system problems reported by the flight crew. If any faults were recorded in the last 10 flight legs, the voice identifies the flight leg and enunciates the internal and external faults for that leg. The Level 5 self-test is just like the Level 4 test, except that it identifies cautions and warnings for the last 10 flight legs. Finally, you get to the Level 6 self-test. It gives you an easy way to test more than 40 discrete inputs. You can use this to verify the installation and proper function of all discrete inputs. If a discrete input changes state, eGPWS enunciates the name of the discrete and its new state. For example, glide slope cancelled. The line maintenance manual has a complete list of input discretes. With the self-tests and good troubleshooting techniques, you can reduce no-fault found removals and keep good equipment in service longer. For more details about the self-tests and troubleshooting, refer to the EGPWS line maintenance manual. For technical assistance, contact the Honeywell Technical Operations Center.